All I can say is it's been a long time since I've done a video and today I can finally move on. My original plan, however, was to document in a diary form uh, each step of where I am today. That didn't happen because I freaked out, unfortunately. But one of my, either the last video or the second last video I did, I was working on this table, which was putting in all the screw holes that I needed in order to assemble this. What I have here is a Juki DDL 5550-6 industrial, uh, industrial lock stitch machine. Now, I can't say sewing machine because that's technically not what it is. It's a lock stitch machine. Still, everyone's going to call it sewing, but whatever. Now, what I discovered as to the reason for this being pulled down and getting thrown away Sorry, is that it aired out. When I reconnected all the wiring, uh, it came up with an error code. So I looked that error code up online and people were just saying in forums to simply replace the machine. I wasn't happy about that because there was no explanation as to what was wrong with the machine, just replace it because it's old. Irritating, but still. So what I discovered is that if I, and I'll use this document here. Oh, it's not, there we go. This plug here at the end, when that was disconnected, the machine would work just fine. It did what it was supposed to. When it was, well, except for the functionality that plugs into here. What uh, happened so, so it, it, it would just sew. But you have to have this one here connected, otherwise the computer will just completely freak out and it won't work. So that's important. If you have a machine like this, or you're at work, or whatever, and you find that this machine just errors out on you, just try unplugging that. If the machine will then sew, great. But don't expect for the wiper, which is this thing here, for the back tack, which you trigger with this, uh, or the thread cutter to function at all. The machine should still sew, but because all the electronics have been disconnected, it's not gonna work. So when I saw this machine, my assumption was that because it was cut, the electronics were basically dead. The body of the machine, however, is like the standard, especially for the time. And that means that you could hook up a traditional motor to it and you can use it as a regular sewing machine. It means that you'd have to handle the back tack manually, but overall, not an issue. When I got it home, it was probably the third time when I discovered that the cabling to the solenoids that control the thread cutter and also the back tack were degraded. I mean, it degraded to the point where when I was finally able to pull it out, it just disintegrated in my hands. So what I did was to put heat shrink over it, uh, about three layers of the stuff, then reconnected everything and it worked. The error went away. So when I turn it on like this, it just clicks on and we'll sew like this. <laughs> you have no idea how shocked I was at that. And I was just shocked. Now this was my original sort of test with the teeth. So you can see that there was obviously some teething issues in here. But regardless, functionality wise, it works. Now the particular Juki I have came with the uh, 320 model interface display thing at the top. And that's overkill for what I need. But I'm gonna keep with it because it's free. I mean, all I've had to do was pay for a couple of my screw ups, which unfortunately set me back a bit. 
And I also had to cover the cost of getting most of this home. Most of the trips were through a taxi, so I think I spent about $70 to $80. Unfortunately, I didn't get everything for the machine. A lot of stuff were missing, which is a real shame, and I am just not happy about that. Sadly, the individual who I could have spoken to and asked questions to had passed away, which is unfortunate, but this individual was also teaching me how to do maintenance on these machines. And because of that interaction, I was able to take a machine and get it going, which is great. Would I then go and sell this to say a business that wanted to do, no, <laughs> no, no. I would replace the solenoids in this thing and redo my wiring because it's fine for home, but still, my original intention was to buy an industrial sewing machine, which was gonna take about a year's worth of saving or a little bit less, depending on how much money I was able to obtain and save. And we were looking, I was looking at between about $2,000 that included the machine, the delivery and the setup, plus also additional components. Where here, uh, I got this machine and I got about four others. I mean, this is great. The amount of money I would have had to have spent in order to get everything, there's no way this would have happened. I have enough to do my own to have my own sewing factory in my in my living room. It, it's just nuts. Now I am still going through and setting everything up, but the important thing, and something that a lot of people who I've spoken to in the past about this don't realize is that one, I know how to use all this equipment. Two, I have a use for all this equipment, even though I don't have the room for it as much. And three, it allows me to pursue a hobby which I didn't think would be possible at this sort of scale. It's insane. So with that out of the way, which is like 10 minute of rant, uh, the problem I'm at now is that everything's set up, but I'm missing parts. And this is one of those orders. So with that, you'd be wondering, well, what's this about? This screwdriver was just something I picked up from the hardware store and I found it so much easier for removing the presser foot. This is something I bought from eBay. I'm not going to put a listing to it, but basically I discovered that this is what most of this places are in, in Australia at least. When you need a sewing machine screwdriver, they supply this. Now this makes life very easy. You have no idea how much but the problem is that you can accidentally over tighten the screws with this thing. Not a good idea. Now, because I don't know anything about how the machine came, I wanted it to have a Pacific setup. I would like this thing to go up to like uh, six or seven um, stitches per inch. I think that's the correct mathematical term for it, but this one only goes up to four. So while I won't be able to do like the basting stitches I would like to do on a machine, uh, that's like one function out of maybe seven or eight. I mean, does it actually matter? No. Now I've gone through and done my first order and I'm still waiting on some other things, but they're not like uh, important. So one thing is going to be the light, which I really can't wait to get my hands on. But what I have now is what effectively will allow me to start actually sewing with this machine versus doing tests like this. And I need to change this thread while I like this black thread and I want to use it for some of the pants I want to make. Um, when it comes to my regular sort of sewing, this is not going to be any good for me. But for today, I'm not changing the thread. I'm going to be fixing up this front area here. So first, I'm going to raise the presser foot and I'm going to take off that. Now I have seen a thing on eBay which would allow you to have a quick change foot, which would be great, but 
Now, I don't know if this is the original foot that came with the machine. It is possible. However, I want the needle guard on it. Now, I do have my own uh, third party one, but I also want to have one of these to be able to modify. So, yeah, I mean, there's like literally nothing wrong with this, but still, it, missing parts. And I should not have taken that screw all the way out. Okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Now, with that said, what we've got here is another problem. And I'm just going to take that out because reasons. So the things that I have for this are a replacement, um, oh, what's this thing called? Replacements take up spring. Now the spring in this is fine, but if the spring breaks, I want to be able to replace it. Important. Now another important thing I had to buy was this drawer. It's not exactly um, you know, original or anything, but it's good enough. I had this idea about buying this really nice drawer that I found. It had like little compartments on the inside and everything. Yeah, the eBay seller decided that he would cancel the order, tell me that he cancelled the order because it didn't have my address, which I confirmed was actually on the invoice. And then the stupid prick basically relisted the drawer with a much higher shipping price. So I pretty much think I understand why he did that, and it really pissed me off. Still, whatever. Now, I've got the feed dogs, which I'll be putting on today. Why do I want these particular feed dogs? Well, they give you better grip on the fabric, and that's important for me. Here's my replacement foot. And I don't know if this... Oh yeah, so the marking on this thing's different. But this is the finger guard. So this stops your finger from going in there and getting like a sharp metal object, you know, stabbed through it. Which is good. And let's see. So there's that. Now, I also have these screws here, and they're for the needle plate. One of these two screws, so this one here is recessed a little bit, and it's smaller, not original. Now, yes, it works for a pinch, but I'm not happy about that. So, I went through the exploded parts diagram thing, and I discovered these, which, my lighting's terrible. And I ordered two, even though I only needed one. These are some replacement feed dog screws, but the only reason I bought these is because the ones in there are looking a bit ratty. This is the kickstand, or not not kickstand, but basically it holds the machine up when you uh, when you have it open to either oil the machine or to clean it out. That I didn't have. Now I did buy two needle plates. The this one's basically a replacement for this one. However, the one that's on the machine, it's actually got this uh, beveled edge, which would make it easier for sliding fabric up. This is just sort of like a bare metal plate. I was hoping this would have basically been a copy of this, but obviously not. And then we have the one that I actually want to put on there. We have some needles, which are very important, since this isn't really the proper type. And I was also sent a free one of these from, uh, where was it? Sewing Machines Australia. So with my order, this is something they included. Personally, I like the BBB model um, snips. I've used these, I've used the really cheap ones from, uh, well, you can buy in places like Spotlight. I don't like them. I, I really don't like the, those really cheap ones. These ones are not that expensive. Uh, they seem to be in the middle ground of the ones you buy out of Japan, which are just wow, versus the versus like the cheap Chinese ones, which are just why do they even exist? So I am happy and I am thankful that they actually sent me this as a um, a gift. Okay, 
Now I'm going to take off this throat plate and then it's going to be getting to the feed dogs. So the question I should ask is, is that going to fit? Ooh, that might actually fit. Okay. So I'm switching out to the flathead, which I'm not too sure if that's the technical name. So what I found is if I stick my thumb on the top of the wrench, roughly where the bit is, it seems to make it a lot easier to get off. Now the other thing I'm going to take off, and I'll put that in my parts in my uh, drawer just to keep it safe, is the needle. I still need to take that off. Yeah, I, I'm not very well liking that needle. Yes, it was great. It was fine to test, but not the best thing to have. And unfortunately, I don't have a shop near me where I can just walk into and go, I need some industrial sewing machine needles. They've got compatible ones, but not the, uh, yeah. It's either wait for someone to come down when they are passing through and get them or ship them. Now, something important, ooh, I'm not happy about that screw. Something uh, I should add when I was going through this, this is the cutting mechanism. What I discovered is that internally it had felt. So build up over a very long period of time. And that's the reason why the thread cutter wasn't working very well, which initially sort of freaked me out. But then when I realized that, oh no, it's just dirty. It's like, oh, okay. So I, I don't know if I mentioned that before, but one of the other issues is that the thread cutter was a bit wonky. So I do want to keep these feed dogs, but uh, the needle plate on this thing, can you see it? Yep. So around this needle hole here, or the throat plate, it's got all these uh, strikes, which is, it's common. Now, as it is now, it's perfectly fine. I'd want to take off this glue here, which I'm pretty sure is from some sticky tape. But in general, um, this needle plate's still fine. I bought the other one just as a just in case, but you know, whatever. Ooh, it does actually fit. Sweet. So I just get that on and I might need to buy a better so I don't technically need to replace these screws and the needle plate no, sorry the uh, feed dog screws but I felt that I should because they are looking a bit old a bit worn out Yeah, that didn't work. Yeah, I'm not actually getting able to bite into that. Okay. There we go. Wow, this thing does not focus very well. So I got those out, and it's basically dirty as expected. So give it a quick wipe. And I'll put a dab of oil on that because it needs it. Where are we? Here we go. That'll be 
useful for something else. Ah, this will do. So that's probably a little too much oil than what I should have put on there, but it's not going to do too much. There we go. All right, feed dog screws. You know that moment you realize you lose something right when it's important? Yeah. Oh no, there it is. Okay. So I'm first going to grab the needle plate that I want to put on. I'm going to grab the needle plate screws. Actually, I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to put these feed dogs in there as well. And the original screws. Yeah. So that's all kept safe and together. To a point. Man, this got dirty quickly. <laughs> all right, let's get this new feed dog on. So we've got the feed dog screws. We have the new feed dogs. Now I'm so lucky that these only go on one way. This is something people at work would have seen me pull out a lot over the years. It is a... Where is it? A pair of tweezers. So yeah, these things. You, I found them on eBay and they're actually pretty good for what I wanted. So I decided to keep them. Best way to hold it. The downside is the day I'm actually doing these on, it's pretty much the worst. I will have some time off coming up soon, but that's because I'm supposed to be mourning the Queen and I won't have enough time on that Thursday to, well, yeah. Rats. Do not lose these little bastards. <sighs> okay. So now that little misadventure is basically going on. Oh, I can actually see better if I look over the phone. Okay. Now just lock that in there. Yeah, I definitely do not have enough light for this.
right, let's see how far that goes. Right, let's loosen these up. So you don't want that to happen. Oh, that's not a good one. This is probably not the best way of doing it, but right now it's the only way I can think of doing it. Actually, you know what? Might be an idea if I do try to screw that in. I've actually never done this before, so it's, um, yeah, it's a bit concerning. It's a bit worrying, too. Alright, so I don't want to lose that. All right. Nope, that's not good.
Mm -hmm. All right, let's try and tighten that. Oops. Probably should have disabled that. Yep. Nope. Oh, turn the machine off. So I can feel that grabbing my finger and pulling. Good. Yes, I'm aware I've got gloves on. All right. Next, we're going to put the needle in. Don't do that, um, despite I, the fact that I did it. All right, let's sharpen this. No, let's tighten it. Okay, so it looks like I don't have to fix that problem. Uh, uh, initially, I thought there was a problem with the needle, uh, with how it was sitting, but it might have just been because of the compatible needle and not the actual proper size. Now I'm going to put on the actual presser foot. Just a quick tight. Now, because I don't want to actually sew anything right now, what I'll do is I'll put this in, lower that, turn the machine on. So it is still, in fact, pulling thread through, but it is, well, it's doing what it's supposed to, so I didn't screw that up. That's good. Now, I need to check how the f actual sewing machine foot is sitting, because it doesn't look right, unfortunately. So I'm going to take that off. Now I have this uh, one called a narrow hem foot. I purchased this a few years ago now actually. And I did see someone on YouTube use this to help align the machine, but they didn't say what foot it was. So narrow hem foot. You can use this thing for doing zigzag 
sorry, for installing things like um, zippers and whatnot. Or we need to do a narrow. Yeah, that's way off. Yeah, I, I can see that that's not center. So if I remember, it's you take off this cap, which is the second one from where I'm sitting. Loosen the screw, which I should turn this off. Like that. Just nudge it so that it's in place. Yep, that should be better. Tighten that screw when I can. Can't actually see a damn thing I'm doing. There it is. Okay. Um. I think that's about as accurate as I can get it. So I'll put this screw cover back on. I suppose the other way to say it is if you look where the uh, bar is for your um, presser foot and you look up, you'll see eventually you'll get to a that cap. You'll find one in front of it and that's for positioning the needle. Hmm. All right. So I'll take that off now. I suppose it's the reason why by default there isn't a hole there. Ooh. Well, hopefully that's all right. So I'll put this back on. Yeah, that looks better. That's what I'm going for. Just bring back this thread through. I seriously cannot wait till I can get that damn sewing machine light. Probably shouldn't have done that, but whatever. There we go. Let's take some of this fabric. Oh, that's where I've signed it before. First, however, I will stick this back on.
You know, I think I might need to try to raise the sewing machine up just a smidge. But that would require me lifting the whole thing out, and that's a pain in the ass. Not to mention messy because of all the damn oil. Alright, let's try this now. So... Set to three stitches. And... So I'm going to have to pull that thread out. I can re-enable the back tack, like so. It's going to take a while to fix. But yeah, that's a tension issue. Now, it only kicked up after I... Oh, the thread's still fine. After I did that switch over, so... Yeah. You need the top tension's too loose, is it? What does that mean? All right. Um, let's loosen that as well. So that tension. Oh, that's ten times better. Yeah, see that last one? Ooh, focus. There we go. So yeah, you see that last one looks ten times better. But this is also not the fabric that... Uh, well, not the fabric, sorry. Uh, this isn't the thread that I'm going to be using on a regular basis. I mean, this looks great for a top stitch, but in general... It's going to be like a... Yeah. But I don't know. Depends. Um, it's actually a little thicker than what I'd be wanting to use normally. Let's see how it operates. And I stick it like here. Yeah, that's what I'm wanting. Ah, <laughs> Ooh. a little tighter, maybe.
Yeah, so I'm going to have to really set this thing up properly for the actual thread that I'm going to be normally using, which is a bit thinner than this. I mean, I really can't say about the gauge or whatever, but it just feels a little thicker than what I'd normally be using. Hmm, didn't cut it properly that time. Okay. Let's see if that was just a fluke. Ah, it was just a fluke. Yeah, that's better. So, I mean, look, this is an older machine, so it's not going to be... Generally, it should be fine. Generally, there shouldn't be any issues with it. And, I mean, offhand, there's like... It, it, it's fine. So, this is great for someone like myself that wants to you know, screw around and occasionally make things. So, uh, I'm quite happy with this, well, acquisition. The amount of money I have to spend on parts is somewhat daunting, and it's going to be. I mean, I, I, I don't think I'm going to have like everything I need for at least several more months so it's not a you buy it and you're done sort of thing which you usually get like with that singer I purchased now that singer the heavy duty singer that I purchased that still has a use see this is great for doing majority of the work but I need to use bar tack I want to do buttonholes I want to do uh, sometimes I need to do a zigzag stitch this machine won't do any of that. However, the Singer will. And it's great to have the Singer and the Juki to use in tandem. The same as having the overlockers that I've got in tandem as well, since when I want to do an overlock stitch, I can just use that. <sighs> okay. And this has come up to almost an hour. I'm hoping I can actually pull the footage of this device, otherwise I'm going to be very pissy. I've made a total and complete mess of everything. That's definitely not that. That's definitely not that. That's definitely that. And last and least, I will show you what exactly I need this thing for. Hmm. You're not going in easily, are you? best idea to do it like that. Oh. <laughs> oh. The uh, thread stands in the way. Oh well. She's complete. Yibbida yibbida.